In today's video, I am going to share with you my top five ways that help babies go to sleep and stay asleep. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today is the follow-up video to last week's baby's nighttime routine video that I did. And I got a lot of questions in the comments of that video and then I also asked for some questions on my Instagram and I have a lot of DMs from you guys. I just wanted to get a really good idea of what it was that you guys need advice on when it comes to babies and sleep time. And so in my research for this video, in my planning and the notes that I have taken, I am taking into account the community here, the questions that you guys have been asking as well as fitting that into my own experience so that I can kind of formulate my thoughts and this list of things that have really helped over the years. Of course, if you have any concerns about your baby, the best place to go is their pediatrician. I'm not giving medical advice, but I am just sharing with you my own personal experience. If you are new here, then welcome. My name is Natalie, and I make lifestyle and mommy videos over here on this channel every Wednesday and Friday, and I would love it if you would subscribe and turn channel notifications on so that you don't miss when I post a new video. And if throughout this video you find yourself nodding or learning Learning something new or you enjoy what I have to say then I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up it helps my channel out so much and I do very much appreciate it so my number one tip for you guys the thing that has helped the most in my experience is to have a consistent daily routine a well-rested baby rests well it kind of feels counterintuitive to um, have your baby sleep during the day we sometimes feel that if a baby gets sleep during the day that they're not going to sleep at night but i have found the opposite to be true i have found that when a baby gets consistent rest throughout the day when they are taken out of a stimulating circumstance and given time in the quiet in the dark to fall asleep and give their body a rest that when it comes to nighttime they are well practiced at falling asleep and staying asleep and they are not so overstimulated that they are fussy when it's time for them to go down at night. And don't let anyone tell you, I have seen this comment before in other mom's YouTube videos and in mom forums and comments on Facebook that somehow um, getting your life into a routine and helping your kids and your babies learn how to fall asleep and that sleep is a regular thing in your life, that somehow that concept is selfish. I have one thing to say to that. Bull crap. When your children are well rested, you have the opportunity to get more rest. And when mom is well rested, we all know that the household is much better. When I've gotten enough sleep at night because my baby is well rested and then she is able to sleep longer through the night, I wake up refreshed, happy, and our household as a result is at peace. My next tip is something that I learned from the book called Baby Wise. Now this book is outdated in a lot of its concepts. There are things in the Baby Wise book that pediatricians now, many years later, have realized isn't necessarily the best. But one of the things that I have always stuck with that that book taught me was the idea of eat, play, sleep in that order throughout the day. And this actually goes along with a question that I've gotten in comments and in messages from you guys is, my baby cannot fall asleep unless they nurse, or my baby is always falling asleep at my breast. And how can I, you know, break them of that habit or whatever? Now, first of all, I would say that falling asleep at the breast, I don't consider to be a bad habit, but it can definitely be sort of um, hindering when the only way your baby will fall asleep is because you are nursing them. My suggestion is to implement the eat, play, sleep format of your day and that means that sleep time is not signaled by eating. Rather, when the baby wakes up from their nap, that is when they eat, then they go to playtime, they get their stimulation, they tire themselves out, and then they are laid down to bed. The only time I don't do this is right before bedtime at night. And that brings me into my next point is that a night time routine like I showed you in last week's video where you go through the exact same steps night after night 
and signal to your baby by dimming the lights in the house, by maybe using a little bit of lavender baby lotion, the scent sort of triggers them, by singing them the same song, by playing the same noise on their little white noise machine, whatever it may be for you and your household and your baby, stick with it and give it a good couple of weeks of really structuring that time right before bedtime that will signal to them it's time to sleep. Another reason that naps are so important is that it actually gives baby a practice run throughout the day, a couple times a day, depending on the age of the baby, obviously. For a little baby, it's more times a day. For an older baby or a kid like my boy's age, it's only once per day now. But having the same sort of routine during nap time as bedtime gets them into the habit of knowing when mom starts to turn off the lights or when we smell our special little lavender lotion, we obviously know that we are headed toward bedtime and this is a time when we quiet down and we bring peace into the house and we start to settle in. That really gets them into the frame of mind that it is time to fall asleep. Which brings me to my fourth point, which is the topic of self-soothing. I think self-soothing, that term has become a four-letter word along with sleep training. Those terms have become four-letter words here in social media, on mom forums, um, people talking back and forth, and that's where I would caution you to hear me out. Um, so I don't think self-soothing and the cry it out method are synonymous. There's a huge difference between crying yourself to sleep and self-soothing yourself to sleep. I think sometimes self-soothing for some babies involves a little bit of crying, um, but it's certainly, for me, not the full-on cry it out method. And that's another question that I saw a lot in my uh, messages and in the comments was, do you use the cry it out method? And I can definitely say that we do not use the cry it out method. There are some nights where my baby would cry a little bit longer than other nights and there's hardly ever a night where she goes down without crying but she never cries for more than just a little bit <clears throat> so I'm going to have to pull an Emperor's New Groove here and pause the video to make a little bit of a clarification or explanation um, what I should have said was we don't let her cry for very long if she's crying for more than about a minute, we go back in there and we rub her little head, we make sure she doesn't have a dirty diaper, we make sure she's comfortable, make sure the room is the right temperature, and walk back out. And sometimes we walk in there five to ten times at bedtime, other times it takes her 30 seconds to fall asleep. And that time that it takes her to fall asleep has gotten shorter and shorter as the months have gone on. Okay. Back to the video. And we have been so consistent with all of the other points that I mentioned before in this video that she seriously only cries for about 30 seconds maximum. She cries, she sticks her thumb in her mouth, and then her eyes close, her breathing slows down, and she falls asleep. And that has taken patience and it has taken consistency like none other in order to make that happen. And again, I've had three kids and not any two of them have been alike in their sleeping habits and in their preferences for falling asleep. And so I have had to adjust for every single child how I structure nap time during the day, how I have their bedroom set up to help them fall asleep. And when you've got twins who are different than each other, it makes things really crazy, but it's not impossible. It can be done. I am a living testimony that it can be done. Then that also brings me to the question that people have been asking, how do I teach my baby to self-soothe? I honestly don't think it's something that we can actually teach our children. I think the instinct to suck their thumb or us offering them a pacifier, if your kids don't like to suck, and if that's not their thing, but they would rather rub their ear or, you know, feel their jammies against their face or whatever it is, that's actually something that they need to navigate themselves. And there may be several nights that are difficult, but after a while, they will find out what it is that helps them fall asleep. I have one kid 
who hums himself to sleeping. Mm -hmm. He'll like to do this little droning thing and it soothes himself to sleep and he's not unhappy while he's doing it. He might not be happy about the fact that he has to go to sleep, but he knows that it's something that comes around every night. It's not something that he's going to get out of and he ultimately knows that it's something that's good for him. And so he does whatever it is that he needs to do in order to self-soothe and help himself fall asleep. And some days are more difficult than others, but as a general rule, our kids sleep really great and they go to sleep and they stay asleep. And my last tip to you is to not stress. That is way easier said than done. Um, but I have found that my kids can sense when I am stressed at bedtime and it's usually when I have something that I have to get done like film a video, work on a project, make a phone call, you name it. When there's something that needs to be done and my kids are having a more difficult time going down for their nap or going down for bedtime and I let that frustration show and I get snappy with them or I show them that I am really stressed at bedtime, then they are going to absorb that stress. They are going to feel it themselves and they will definitely have a harder time falling asleep. This principle is definitely something that I implement in other areas of my life as well. At the dinner table when I've got a picky kid, showing that I'm stressed about that situation only makes matters worse or when I am trying to teach my newborn how to breastfeed and I am in a difficult situation because there's latch issues, there's milk supply issues, you name it. If I show that I'm stressed, it only makes matters worse. And so I have found the whole don't stress, hang loose, sort of, I know it sounds so hippie, but talking yourself through it in your brain, telling yourself it's okay, don't stress, just breathe. Uh, tomorrow might be better, next time might be better, um, we're all in this together sort of mantra going on definitely helps bring peace to the situation and it helps your kids feel secure and at peace. When mom's stressed, when mom's tired, when dad's stressed, when dad's tired, everyone feels it and eliminating stress in your life ultimately leads to better sleep and longer sleep and happier, healthier kids and a happier and healthier family as a result. Of course, there is so much more on this subject, so many facets of kids and sleep and babies and sleep that we could talk about. And I would like to make more specific videos in the future. Um, but I thought that this was a good jumping off point just because of all of those questions that I got from you guys based on last week's video. Um, and then next week I'm also, I guess this is like a little three week series with last week's baby's nighttime routine, this week's tips for baby sleep, and then next week's my kiddos, my three year old twins nighttime routine. If you are curious to see that, then make sure that you are subscribed and you have your channel notifications turned on so that you don't miss when I post that video. If you guys thought this video was helpful or insightful, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and comment below your tip, your number one go-to tip when it comes to helping your kids sleep at night. And if you are one of those parents who don't got no tips right now because you are just making it by the skin of your teeth, then I would love it if you would comment any of the questions that you may have. We as a community may be able to help you and respond to those comments. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you later.